Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Lean and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft and I'm here today to dispel the myth that GitHub is a developer only tool. I'm an IT pro and I've done that for the majority of my career. I am in firmly in that IT pro and infrastructure engineer camp. And I always thought that GitHub was a developer tool. I never thought it was something that I had to learn or pay attention to. But I was very wrong about that. And I'm here today to tell you how I use GitHub in my day-to-day -day operations. Now in its simplest form, GitHub is a tool that allows you to collaborate with others and do some version controlling. The first thing I ever used GitHub for was my code storage. Now, years ago, I had to learn how to code PowerShell because Microsoft Exchange took a lot of the functionality away from the GUI and I had to do it in PowerShell. So I used to have all these scripts in my OneDrive, my Google Notes, um, my um, email, or randomly on pen drives. And it was really hard for me to try and find those whenever somebody wanted me to do something. So I eventually started storing it in GitHub and I could easily find it. The URL that GitHub gives you is really easy to remember. Um, I can have my code private or I can have it public so other people can see it and I can find it really easily. I also use GitHub for hosting websites. So there is something called GitHub Pages that allows you to store your code on GitHub and then you can create a website for it. Now you don't have to use the GitHub URL, you can actually attach that, that custom URL that you have. So if like me, you have bought domain names for projects and have them squirreled away somewhere, you can start to use GitHub Pages to create those websites. So I also use GitHub to share my PowerPoint slides. So I often present at user groups, conferences, or even at customer events. And one of the main questions I get is, can I get a copy of your slide deck? Now I use SlideShare as well to share my deck, but unfortunately with SlideShare, you get this really long URL, which is hard to communicate verbally or even to put on a slide deck without having to use a vanity URL service. GitHub gives me a really easy URL to share with attendees and I can put that on a slide deck as well. Now, the other thing that is great about GitHub is that it can be publicly accessible. So if you wanna showcase your work, if you wanna showcase the skills that you have done, you can actually use GitHub for that. You could potentially get headhunted because people have found your work on GitHub or if you're interviewing for a new job, people can use their favorite internet search and then find your work there. Now, bearing in mind, as it is public, please do share your best work and not just these rough drafts that you've worked on at home. So cloud is something that we are all using nowadays and GitHub integrates really well with things like AWS, Azure and Google. One of the things that GitHub works really well with is the Azure web service. Now I talked about GitHub pages, but if you need something more robust, if you need to be able to put like a load balancer or traffic manager in front of your website, you can do that using GitHub and Azure web app. So you store your code in GitHub and then can instruct your Azure web app to pull that code from GitHub and you have continuous integration from that. Now, you probably want a staging area between your production website and your GitHub so that you're not just right-click publishing to your production environment. So the other cool thing within GitHub is GitHub Actions, and that was released at the end of 2019. And again, in its simplest form, it allows you to take the code that you're storing in GitHub and do deployment so you can build software or you can deploy resources within Azure. So let's take a look at that in action. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. Now I have two files. I have my VM creation file in PowerShell, and I also have my workflow file in YAML. If we take a look at the VM creation file, it's very simple in, in that it declares a bunch of parameters at the start, and then we have four sections where we log into our Azure tenant, we select the subscription that we want to deploy our resources to, we create the resource group, and then we create that virtual machine within that resource group. But all the magic for GitHub Actions is actually within the workflow file. So if we go across to it, we again have a bunch of sections within it. And ultimately what it does is triggers when we push code within our GitHub repo. And then the job starts to execute. And basically this job will check out our code uh, from the GitHub repo and put it into the GitHub Actions working directory. Now we make sure we're in the right folder structure, so we change the working directory. And then we run this PowerShell script. Now it looks a bit complicated because there's lots of code to it, but ultimately what it's doing is ta taking it and taking the PowerShell script and passing in the parameters. Now you'll see I've 
declared a bunch of parameters in plain text. But I've also got ones that are uh, within a secret area. And that's because I don't want to share all my parameters to the public. Within the secret area, all the information there is encrypted and only GitHub Actions has access to it. Now let's have a look at this in action and actually trigger it and see what it deploys within Azure. So I'm going to change the deployment region for this resource and we're going to use UK South instead. So I change the deployment region, I save it, and then I want to commit that change. So the code is now going up into our GitHub repo. So if we go over to our GitHub page, we should be able to see it. Yeah, we've now deployed that change to the code. And if we go into the Actions tab, we should see that the, the pipeline has actually triggered. And if we go in to monitor it, we can see that it's starting to set up that job. It's starting to check out that repo code and it's going to start to work through and provision that virtual machine in Azure. So that is now our job within GitHub Actions finished, and we can see that it's worked through the various different steps. Now I'm doing a very simple deployment and it's taken probably maybe two minutes to run that job. If you're doing a more complicated job, then it may take longer. So if we switch over to our Azure portal, we can actually see this resource. So if we go into resource groups, and if we scroll down, we can see that we have that virtual machine de deployed now. So I've shown you quite simply how to use GitHub from an IT pro angle. And I fully believe that GitHub isn't just a developer tool, it is for everyone. So hopefully I've dispelled the myth that GitHub is only for the developer audience. It's actually for everybody. Now, if you want to follow along and use the GitHub Actions code that I did, you can use the link on the screen and we'll also share it below. Thank you for watching.